Okay, we're going to show you a short video here of how to replace the Radar 6 removable USB solid state drives. This drive system with the newer um, dual drive bays that are in the Radar Studio. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open, remove the lid. Now the lid has six screws. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we'll start by removing the screws. This requires a Phillips screwdriver. I'm using a power screwdriver because it's a lot faster. So we'll just remove those two screws at the back, two screws in the middle, and the two screws at the front. And then there's two screws on each side, one, two, and two on the other side. These don't have to be removed, just loosen them two turns. There we go. And then on the other side, and the other side. Better than not to remove them because then you'll potentially lose them. Pull the lid up, set it aside. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to disconnect all the power and data cables from the Bay of Gigs. The Bay of Gigs is the mechanism that sits right at the top right hand side of the radar that contains the DVD drive and the two removable SATA receivers and the system drive. So we'll start by disconnecting our system drive. So there's our system drive, our system drive power. Um, then we'll disconnect the SATA drive data cables, two, two of these connectors both connected into here and here. And then we'll remove the uh, small four pin power on the white Molex connector, the first one and the second one. Now you'll notice there's a little plastic tab here that you have to pull up with your fingernail. If you just try to yank it out, it won't come out. So you gotta pull it up and then pull it out. And then it'll be no problem. Okay, now that we've removed all of the cables, we're ready to remove the Bay of Gigs. So the Bay of Gigs is held in by two, four screws on the top and then two screws down the side. So we'll start with the four screws on the top. And then to get to the two screws on the side, you can see there's a screw down here, and then there's another screw on the other side. We need a long shaft screwdriver. So I'm just going to go get one of the uh, long shaft screwdrivers. Now, I'm going to leave the DVD drive in. You don't need to remove that. And I'm going to leave the bottom removable drive installed. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to be able to line up the new drive flush with the surface so that when I put the Bay of Gigs back in the radar, the drive is nice and flush with the front panel. We don't want the drive to be sticking out too much or inset too much, or it will look um, not as sleek and not as cool. So uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll remove these two screws on the side of the drive. We'll loosen those two screws. Remove those two. Now flip it over. Remove the other two. Remove those two. And now I should be able to just slide the receiver out. I can either slide it out the front or the back. It's easier if you slide it out the back. So we take our new drive dual bay receiving frame and we slide this in from the back like that. And then what we want to do is insert the new screws that come with the drive. Do not use the old screws from the uh, previous USB 3 removable drive because they're a different thread and they will not work. So we just want to put it in loose 
and for now and then we're going to tighten it up once all four screws are in. So there's the first screw, the second screw. Shoot that finger tight, flip it over. Put in the third screw in the front hole on the other side. Just do that by hand or you can use a screwdriver if you're not having the dexterity. And then we're going to push that right through to the front. Okay, seats perfectly well if we just push the drive right to the front. We'll tighten up the first screw, holding it into position with from the back. This screwdriver has an automatic torsion adjustment on it, um, but you can just do it snug. You don't have to do it super tight. Okay, so there we've got four screws in and we've got the new drive installed. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the blank cover plate in here to show you how if you were to install two of these now you would remove this drive and do the same thing on the bottom drive but if you're just installing one and a blank cover plate because some people will have taken out two drives and replaced them with one receiver with two bays um, then you would install the blank cover plate so I'm going to go ahead and show you that. So again we'll remove the four screws of the older drive Remove these first, flip it over, I've already taken out one of the screws so I just have one more to take out, remove that screw and then slide it out, oops I didn't take out that other screw. Then we can just slide it out like that. And we can either put in a second one of these or we can put in a blank cover plate, drive bay cover plate. And this goes in with the screw holes at the bottom. So we'll slide that in and we'll put in the screws. So there's four screws for that. Now these screws might be a little bit tight because there's a little bit of powder coating that sometimes gets into the threads and in that case it was a little bit tight. So don't be afraid to just go ahead and thread it on through. This one's nice and easy. We'll flip it around, put in the last two screws. Screw those in. Okay, now that one was tight because of the powder coating. And that one was easy. So now what we're going to do before we tighten those down, we're going to line this up because we don't want it to look crooked. So we're going to make sure that this is, again, flush with the front. And I would put it about halfway between this edge here and the front is going to put it about where it needs to be. And now you'll, you might have to experiment with that a bit. If you're not happy, tighten that first screw a tiny bit and go to the other side and make sure it's in the same position. Once you've got it exactly where it needs to be, you can tighten the back two screws. I'm just going to check it one more time. And I'm going to loosen this one up a bit and readjust because I'm not happy with where that ended up. Okay. 
I'm going to put it right there and just ever so slightly snug that up. Check it one more time. It's good. Now I'm going to tighten up the back one. Tighten up the back one. Tighten the front again. Okay, so now I've got my new dual bay receiver and my drive cover plate. I've left my DVD drive in. I can put my bay of gigs back in. But to make this easier, before I do, I'm going to set the screw right in the top here and on the other side as well. The two bottom brackets, these two wings that stick out at the bottom, put those two screws in first. Now we carefully place this back inside. Actually, before we do that, I'm going to show you where the where the um, connections go. We've now gone away from these four pin white power connectors. We can go directly to the black SATA connector. So we're going to put our power connector there. We're going to put our top drive. So the top drive SATA connector is going to connect beside the power connector. And then the bottom drive data cable is going to go over here on the right. And make sure this switch here is set to on. That will disable or engage the bottom drive. So we want to leave that in the on position. So we can go ahead and install the unit with these connections already there. When we insert the Bay of Gigs back into the front panel, we're going to tilt it down like this. So kind of tilting back. We're going to, we're going to set these two wings, these two wings with screw holes, on these other two wings that are sticking out. And we're going to then tilt it level. And you can see this one slides in nicely, but this one's hitting. So we're going to have to we're going to have to pull this up, and then we can shove that one in there like that. Okay. However, if we do it without putting the screw in first on the bottom wing, we're going to have trouble getting that screw in there unless we've got some kind of glue or a magnetic screwdriver. If you don't have a magnetic screwdriver, then what we recommend you do is install the screw first on this right hand side, tilt it back, and then position the screw, bottom screw, over the hole, get your long shaft screwdriver, and just screw it in a couple of turns. There it is. It's screwed in, and I can feel that it's grabbing into the threads. Just give it a couple more turns there. And then, now I'm going to I'm going to push this down and pull up on the edge a bit. Okay, until that metal bracket slides under this lip. Now, as I shove this forward, I'm going to have these four holes have to line up with these four holes. But now if we look at the front, I don't want I don't want to grab onto the plastic of the new receiver. So, I want to make sure that as we slide this forward, we we make sure that this doesn't get caught on anything. So just slide it forward, and there you can see it's coming through the front panel hole, and it's all lined up. Okay? Now that we've done that, we can go ahead and put in our original screws that are the countersunk screws into these four holes. Just put them in loose at first. Then I'm going to get the other screw for this bottom um, bracket, and I'm going to I'm going to put it on the end of the screwdriver and hold it with my fingernail. I'm going to position it with the screwdriver angled back, so you can see it's in the hole. Then tilt the screwdriver back, and just kind of nudge the top of the screw so that it's going vertically into the hole. And then give it a couple of turns. Okay. Once that's in, go ahead and tighten that one up. Go back to this side, tighten the other one up, go to the top, tighten those four up.
There we go. Now we've installed our bay of gigs. Now let's take a look at the front and we can see that the cover plate is nice and flush and the new receiver is protruding out slightly. You could have adjusted it so that it's a little bit more flush and also make sure that it's not catching on this top edge as it goes in. So you might have to adjust those screws a little bit, but eventually you'll get it so it's looking just like what you want. Okay, now we're going to go in and talk about the SATA, um, the additional SATA and power connections. Now that you've got your SATA drives hooked up and you've got your power hooked up, we have these extra spare power connectors. We can just leave those in there. Just make sure they're not falling into the fan blades here and uh, the CPU fan blades and just make sure they're tucked away nicely. Now we're going to put our hook our system drive back up. In your case, you're going to have this already bolted in like that or there could be two system drives. Um, and then we're going to hook up our system drive power. If you don't hook up your system drive and system drive power, you're not going to be able to boot the system. So hook the system drive data cable and the power back up. If you get confused as to where the system drive data goes, if you follow the cable back, it plugs into the um, connector towards the furthest back and next uh, to the red heat sink. So it's just on the top left corner of the red heat sink. That's the first connector where you want to put your boot drive. Okay, so we've got all that installed. Now we can go ahead and put the lid back on and we're away to the races. If you do have a DVD or a Blu-ray drive installed, then it's either going to be um, this little daughter board here, which is a USB to SATA daughter board. In that case, we just go ahead and connect it with the red wire on the far right. So you plug it in and that one connector, you do not need this power connector hooked up. You just need this one connector. If it's not a DV, if it's not a USB connected drive, then this board won't be there. There'll be a SATA, a red SATA cable that contains both power data that plugs right in here. You just go ahead and plug that on and you'll be all set. And then of course our system drive sitting right there.